we're here this time to talk about working with bees. How to open up a collie, how to uh, inspect the collie to go through it, to remove the frames, and uh, do everything in a way that is, keeps the bees nice and calm and protects the queen. We always need to be thinking about the queen when we're opening a hive and going through to ensure that we don't damage her with our manipulations. So, while we're working uh, in the spring of the year, we've got a small colony here. Uh, things are a lot easier than later on when, when the, there's a there's bigger population, more equipment and so on to work through. So this is a good place to start at the beginning of the year. This is an overwintered nucleus colony that we've just transferred into a full-size hive about a week ago. And we're going to uh, open it up and have a look. Uh, I like, when we're working at, at uh, the brood chamber, I like to be sitting down, so I either sit on a bucket like this that we carry our smoker fuel in, or on a stool uh, like so, but the uh, bucket works just fine too. So, first thing we'll do is uh, add some smoke to the colony. We'll puff a bit of smoke at the entrance, where all the bees are going in and out of the hive. So we call that the front of the hive or the entrance. And we don't stand or walk at the entrance. That's because we'll be obstructing the bee flow. We could be standing on bees or stepping on bees. So, uh, and the movement of our feet in front of the entrance, we're likely to get stung on the ankles if we are working in that area. So we just stay away from the front of the hive. We'll puff some smoke there again. And then we'll sit down and take the hive apart. As much as possible, we avoid uh, injuring bees as we're working through the hive so we they can get crushed in between different bits of equipment and so we try and avoid that we'll puff some smoke as we open the inner cover so just peel that inner cover back and puff a little bit of smoke in and then we'll lay that inner cover on the ground we use a canvas inner cover some people use feed sacks as a, as a fabric cover, uh, but the most common thing is to have a wooden inner cover. It just this is our preference, is the fabric cover. So you can see that that smoke makes the bees go down inside the hive and gorge on honey. So as, we, as the bees come up to the surface of the, of the frames, we add a bit more smoke to move them back down again. So we do need to add smoke to the hive periodically. And of course the smoke has to touch the bees for it to be effective. So on a windy day you have to be a little bit more uh, focused on how you're directing the smoke. We don't however puff the smoke down in between the frames because that just gets the bees running around. Now we always take the second frame out first. The first one is often firmly attached to the box so it's a bit harder to get out without crushing bees. As we move more towards the middle the queen is more likely on these frames and that first frame that you pull out, there's the biggest risk of crushing a queen and other bees. So we'll move back to this second one and there's less risk involved. We also want to be working across the box methodically so we can do a thorough inspection. So if you start in the middle, you have to go two directions. So we'll start with the second frame. We pry against the third frame, holding the, the second frame in position. And then we pry against over here, and what we've done is we've broken the bond in between the second and the third frame. I like to jam my finger in here and then pry up. That with my finger gives a bit of a space so I can't pry that frame against the next one. And then we loosen that up there. Pinch the frame with index and thumb on both sides. And then just pull up as straight as possible. There's a natural tendency to tip towards you as you're pulling up, which would mean crushing bees with the bottom of the frame as it's being pulled up. So we can pull it up nice and straight and slowly. And then you can lean a corner of the frame down and tip it over and have a look at the comb. We're not going to be focusing very much this time around with what we're seeing in the hive. We're more focusing on the technique of dismantling the hive. But that frame will then lean against the far front corner of the hive. By doing that, we're getting it completely out of the way so it doesn't interfere with us taking out other frames. If the queen happened to be on this frame and she dropped onto the ground, at least she's near the entrance and can just run into the hive. 
And again, we're not doing it at the front of the hive, so that's a nice safe area there. So now we have lots of space to be working with. We have all this extra space, so from then on there's less risk of crushing a bees or even the queen. A few bees with their heads looking up at me. So we'll just puff a little bit of smoke there. It doesn't take very much. And then we'll hold the frame with the thumb and pry it towards me. We hold on to it as we pry so that it doesn't snap free, sending vibrations through the hive which agitates the bees. So then we can pull that over and into the middle of the space and then come straight up and you can see there's very little risk of crushing bees now that we have all this space. To handle the frames, to tip them, or to look them from one side to another, we need to move one hand at a time. So I like to put the frame up vertically and then rotate the upper hand and then rotate the bottom hand to go from one side of the frame to the other. Easier to do than to describe. You can tip it and just move one hand at a time as you're going. But well, we have a look at that frame and then we can put it back into the hive, transfer our fingers back onto the top of the frame, lower it down where we have all this space, and then just gradually move it over and snug it up against the next frame so you maintain all this working space here. We'll then hold this frame and pry the next one free. Pry again, and then pull the frame up, straight up, and then we rotate our hands around the end, so we can hold it like a book, and then we can transfer it over to the other side, and again, look, look at it like you're holding a book. I happen to see the queen on this side of the frame. Here she is right here, surrounded by her retinue or her court, all the bees that are feeding her and cleaning her. She's busy looking from cell to cell, looking for a place to lay an egg. Of course her behavior is altered by being exposed to sunlight. Occasionally you'll see them laying an egg even out in the sunlight though. So we want to take extra special care of her. So what I'm going to do is lean her against the other frame that we've set it out of the hive to make sure we can keep track of where she is while we do the rest of the colony inspection. So I will take this frame and I'll lean it in a way that we're not going to crush any bees or the queen. Now she'll stay in that nice dark spot in between the two frames there and we can carry on and inspect the rest of the colony. If bees get in your way you just kind of bop them out of the way with your hive tool so that you have room for your hive tool without pinching any bees. I'll pry that one loose, pinch the frame, move it over to where we have space, pull it straight up, rotate our hands around and tip the frame towards us so we can inspect the cells. Now we're going to close the hive back up again. We transfer our fingers to the top of the frame, move it down, slide it over. I should mention at this point it's not a good idea to pry against that end of the frame seems like a natural place to dislodge the frames but you're prying against this weak part of the box and if the frame is, is, is uh, really stuck down with wax and propolis you'll actually break the box there. So I always pry against the adjacent frame. Alright, so now we know that the queen is on one of these frames here. We're going to pick up this frame I don't see her on this side. Oh, yep. There she is right there. Right here. So I'm going to protect her by turning the frame so that 
she is on the opposite side and then give her lots of space as I'm putting this frame down and then just slowly move that over into place. Now, that means she's safe over here in between the frames and we can then move the frames back to their original positions and then that the first one we took out goes back to its original spot we gradually lower the frame down now we have a little extra space here so we need to sh just shift the frames around slightly so that they're nice and evenly spaced throughout the box we're going to apply a bit of smoke now to get the bees moving down so that we put the inner cover on there's very little chance of crushing any so we'll just set that into position there wiggle it around a little bit let any bees out that are going to be trapped. As we put the lid on, we'll make sure there aren't any bees on the, the inner cover. Any bees that get are up here will be trapped in there when we put the lid on and will then die. So we keep the clear them out of the way there. Make sure there aren't any bees in here. If there are, tap them off. Oh, there's one that snuck in. And then we just set the lid down in place there. And we've done our colony inspection. So there you've seen a few ways of handling the frames safely to avoid uh, damaging the queen and to enable us to be able to do a colony inspection. Coming up right next we'll actually inspect each of these frames to see what we can see inside a normal beehive. Thanks very much, see you next time.